Chairmanship. I certainly welcome the opportunity to speak in today's debate, not least because it's the only time that anyone from Inverclyde will be afforded the opportunity to have any say on the proposed closure of the Port Glasgow Job Centre. As the Minister will already be aware, that the decision to close one of my constituency's two job centres was not put out to consultation because the distance between Greenock and Port Glasgow Job Centre is less than three miles. By my reckoning, it's 2.6 miles between the two buildings as the crow flies, and 2.84 miles if you measure the actual route and one would need, if that, that one would need to take along the road network. For the sake of an additional 250 metres, it's hard to understand why the UK Government wouldn't consult on this decision so that service users can outline how the changes affect them. Or maybe it's the case that the UK Government simply doesn't care what service users think. Otherwise, the obvious course of action would have been to undertake a consultation on all closures. By setting up the consultation criteria in the way they have, the UK Government has manufactured the result that it wanted, namely only 30 job centres out of the 183 affected by these changes will be subject to consultation. We all know the reality of this situation is that the closure decision has absolutely nothing to do with providing a government, a government service. Rather, this is part of the UK Government's goal of set, selling £4.5 billion pounds worth of government land and property by 2020-21. Over the course of the last Parliament, the DWP estate shrunk by 17%, with the government intent on reducing the size by a further 20%. I fully appreciate the need for any government to spend public funds wisely, but the decision to slash the number of job centres will most definitely have a negative impact on my constituents. The most obvious consideration is the additional travel costs that service users will face in getting to their appointments. This will barely register a small change for a UK government minister or indeed an MP, but is an unwanted additional expense for someone already struggling on a low income. Constituents will also be burdened with increased travel times, which in turn puts them at an increased risk of being sanctioned under the DWP's draconian and uncompromising rules. And again, the Minister may take the position of it's only three miles difference. What's the big deal? One issue that may have been identified had a local consultation taken place is that the only main road between Greenock and Port Glasgow is liable to flooding at certain times of the year. It may block once or twice a year, but one missed appointment is all it takes to be sanctioned. I'd like to put on record that I support the staff of the Port Glasgow Job Centre for fulfilling their support roles as best they can with the guidance handed down to them from a ministerial level. I'm aware that they have their own reservations about the closure and how it will affect their clients. In the words of Mark Servotka, the General Secretary of the PCS, Job centres provide a lifeline for unemployed people and force them to travel further is not only unfair, it undermines support to get them back to work. A report from the Disability Benefits Consortium found that 93% of respondents to a survey of service users thought the process for applying for PIP was stressful. 80% experienced difficulties in completing the claim form, while 82% felt the application process had a negative impact on their health. Can the Minister explain to me how closing one of my constituency's two job centres will improve that experience for service users? We can highlight the lack of consultation and the specific practical issues surrounding this closure. My fear, however, is that this issue highlights once again a more general problem, the UK Government's complete lack of compassion or genuine concern for vulnerable people. Instead, they pursue spreadsheet politics where the only thing that matters is the bottom line. I hope this debate will not, include, will not conclude with a meaningless regurgitation of the government's policy. At the very least, the Minister should have the intellectual honesty to come to this debating chamber and admit that the experience of service users is not a consideration in the closure decision. <coughs> My constituents deserve that. I will therefore be supporting calls for these closures to be suspended until a wider consultation is conducted so that we can properly assess the impact of this decision on all our constituents.